Hi, everybody. Welcome to the newest edition of the Philly Film Brothers podcast. I am Chris Pierdomenico. And I'm Dave Pierdomenico. And this is 2020. This is 2020. Our first video of the year. Officially, one that we've recorded in 2020. Yes, to be fair, that uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, reboot, I made it a French word, reboot, reboot, was recorded way back in November. November. Why did we not see it in November? Um, I waited to release it um, based on when it was released on Blu-ray and digital. Um, I figured most people would see it by then, and so it, that was a... That was an unusual release with the Roadshow yeah. and everything, so I, I, not everybody had seen it yet. Except I got it on Redbox like two weeks before you posted it, so... Okay, well, fine, fine. Yeah. Why don't you edit the video? I'm going to call this out anyway. This is so pointless. Today we're going to be talking about the... Um, um, the next video game movie. The next video game movie. The... Super Mar... Oh, no. Sonic... The Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Not his first appearance on the silver screen. That is true. He Wreck was, it Ralph. Wreck it Ralph, Ralph, and I believe the sequel. Or if you count that anime movie from like, what was that late eighties, early nineties that we rented from? Oh, Video that was Den. the mid nineties. Yeah, that was yeah. It, it was it was Sonic, a Japanese animation and it, Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. Uh, so with, with the the Mecha yeah. Sonic, yeah, and yeah. that got really like deep and philosophical at the end. Watch the Nostalgia Critic review of it; it's really good. I don't remember much about it, but I remember enjoying it. I just remember there is only one Sonic Nick Nick at the end when it goes all Terminator two. Anyways, we're here to talk about this the Sonic the Hedgehog twenty twenty Sonic the Hedgehog. And in case you couldn't tell. Uh, I am a big Sonic fan. I have been since the early 90s. Subtle. Uh, Subtle yeah. much. So, you know, these are some of the games I have. And I also, um, you know, I collected a lot of the comics. For a while, you, I, you I had, had boxes. I, and boxes, boxes. No, no lie. Before we recorded this, he was frantically running around saying, I can't find my Sonic comics. It was a great series. You sounded like a 10-year-old. Who was going to a convention that like wanted to get a Sonic comic signed but couldn't find them, and you were you know just what? so disappointed. You know what, man? This is DorkDaily.com. We just own it. All right. Yes, we do. So, so Sonic the movie. Um, I what to say? First impression. Loved that Sega has their own like MCU logo intro right. now. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Are we getting like a Sega? Cinematic, Sega cinematic. Universe, well, maybe? there's there's hints of a sequel to this. Um, we'll we'll get to the ending yeah, but shortly, but um, just that that was really I was not expecting that, and that was really cool to see. Yes. So so my impression overall, and I I, I struggled to kind of find the words for this because it's coming from someone that that is a big fan. It's coming from someone that has seen many incarnations of Sonic. So this is this is not the first dramatic incarnation of Sonic. Nor will it be the last, In, and uh, um, including two television shows that we two television shows in the nineties. Um, so, you know, I guess with this, I liked it. I didn't love it. That was kind of my uh, I get It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I'll say, for me, half the jokes were legitimately like smart and witty and funny mm -hmm. and got me the other half felt like they were out of like a disney channel show they just really corny cheesy like oh you went you you drove them and you made the give me five stars uber joke okay it, you could have done better movie it seemed like a it did seem more like a kid's movie it in, did in this case not even the first movie where James Marsden has spent the whole movie with a CGI sidekick that right. he ends up joining. He's, For those of you, well, now he's typecast. So, you know, you you get killed off in one X Men movie, and you're just your career is doomed for life. <laughs> Apparently, actually, um, you could say the third movie where he's off an animated one, if you count uh, Enchanted. Yeah, I guess I so. Technically. He was in that. Yes. So he does not do well when he's not Cyclops. <laughs> I thought that the idea was very creative. I thought the idea of bringing Sonic into the world, like it's first of all, like on paper, how do you do a Sonic the Hedgehog 
live action movie. Uh, maybe one of the most infamous examples of doing a live action video game adaptation was the Super Mario Brothers movie, which we will review at we, some point on here. We do not speak. We do not speak. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Um, so it's, that, that that movie is the film that shall not be named. So it's tough. It's it is tough to do. Well, it's because, because it, it's such a bizarre concept. Do you to do begin it with. in their world or do you bring it into our world? And this one kind of did both. Uh, kind of, but you know, it treated Sonic. I mean, it followed a lot of the same cliches as oh, here's a character who's like a creature that's not supposed to be in our world. You might say a fish out of water. Yes, is the trope. Yes, um, you know, it's almost like. I mean, I feel like ever since E.T., there have been movies about, oh, here's this little critter that doesn't belong yeah. in our world, but he's here, the government's looking for him, and some kid or immature adult buddies up with him, and they go on an adventure and learn about each other and all that. Then they yeah. become best friends, and there's a part in the middle where, oh, no, they're not friends, or he was only using him, and we're not cool, but then in the end, it's all okay. We didn't even really have that too much in this. There wasn't, like, the the break like the the um, character at the lowest point i was trying to think of what this what would this be comparable to in recent history and the closest thing really is detective pikachu um and yeah which in itself was kind of like a takeoff of who framed roger rabbit but i would argue that detective pikachu was a better movie in my opinion because in detective pikachu that was the world yeah this was supposed to be our world and maybe maybe Pokemon is a, is a more adaptable um, sort of franchise. For I, I will Enterprise. say that um, I liked that it started that the world Sonic inhabits is a completely animated world. Yeah. So, did you notice who it explains his look? Did, did you notice who attacked him? What they look like? No, who. They look like echidnas. They look like what Knuckles is. Oh, I did not so, realize that. So, yeah, because I'm like, wait, is that Knuckles? And so I wonder if that's, that would kind of be cool if they, because I'd be open for a sequel to this, if they tie that in um, to a sequel of some sorts. Um, but I I, I did, mean, there's I plenty of stories uh, they could adapt. Um, so let's, elephant in the room, we gotta get this out of the way. How do we feel about how Sonic looked? I I thought that was one of the best parts of the movie. I, I thought that the the CGI for him, I mean, if you're going to do Sonic CGI, it worked for me. I thought, I mean, I think it was definitely a great choice to uh, do, I mean, as, as much as it cost, and uh, I know there's some controversy over that, but I yeah, think it, was, I it definitely paid off. I, I think, did you not think so? I mean, yeah, to, to your point, I, I think it was better to make... Especially because he was coming from his own world. It makes sense that he should look like this Sonic. Uh, speaking to the controversy, I've heard some of that too. Um, I honestly... I don't really know enough about it to really say either... I, I heard things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to research further. I know that they even pushed back. This was supposed to come out in, I think, November. November, yeah. But they pushed it back, uh, you know, three months just so they could rework all the CGI after the whole world complained. And that is controversial in and of itself because, you know, for the first time, the audience is really telling the production company what to do. And I think... I think in one sense, it's great that the, 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 the Paramount listened, that... You know, I think we should reward good behavior, but then what kind of precedent does it set as well uh, for yeah, I don't, I don't creativity, I wonder. I don't necessarily want... Stu I mean, directors face enough pressure from studios and producers and just business people that don't... They're not creative types. Mm -hmm. They follow the money. There's enough pressure uh, between those two that I, I wouldn't want to see... Like, in this instance, I think that was the better choice. Yeah. But what if down the line, you've got a movie coming out, and, you know, something gets leaked about the plot. Audience hates it. Change it completely. Oh, well, I, I've written this whole... Isn't that kind of what happened with episode nine? Supposedly. 
I mean, that happened because of the backlash of Last Jedi. Yeah, but there was another story out. But anyway, but that aside, um, no, I I thought you know me. I'm normally uh, I despise CGI mm-hmm. when it's used unnecessarily. I I I sort of I sided with Christopher Nolan in in the sense that only when it's absolutely necessary. That said, so you you would have preferred an actual hedgehog be used. Is what you're saying. You know, there's not a lot of jobs out there for hedgehogs, (laughs) and they're struggling. Did you know that the hedgehog unemployment rate is actually at 100%? Wow, that's sad. That's very sad. Very sad. No, but I... uh, See, because to me, it always... I can tell it's fake. Takes me out of it. But because he started off in an animated world... Yeah. It was actually easier to forgive that because, oh, well... Of course that's what he looks like, but he's not from our world. Right. In his world, that's normal. It, that's it's normal, like, yeah. It's like Roger Rabbit. Well, you're I, not supposed to. You're, you're supposed to like a cartoon. I wondered, you, you know the ring thing with kind of going through different worlds through a ring. I mean, that started in the first Sonic game mm-hmm. uh, when you go to the special stage, but then that was kind of more used in Sonic 3D Blast, so that was kind of an interesting... There were little little tributes to the game. Kind no, of there were. There, um, I, I, like I love lot. that uh, they called Robotnik Eggman. Yeah, yeah, near the end. Um, he, he just calls him Eggman. So um, I guess maybe to talk about what I liked first, and I'll get into what I okay. I didn't love. Um, I... I thought that yeah, I, I thought the CGI was handled well. I thought it was an entertaining story. I thought it was well put together. I thought it did have some genuine laughs in there. I love the sense of maybe world building that we may get later. Um, I love the end credits. I thought that was great. I, I would play that game. <laughs> yeah. Um, that seemed like that was very much to the fans. I thought Jim Carrey honestly was okay. What What did you think of... Uh... Of that, because I, I, so maybe I went into this with very high expectations, I, and I think I, I always do. I had heard from some source. I heard people say, "Oh, Jim Carrey's great." It's yeah. Jim Carrey recapturing his '90s spirit, kind of. Which he gets. It's almost like he's good when he's being goofy. Yeah, he thrives at that, and and he gets to do that at times, but. At times he just felt cheesy. Well, and I think and other that... times he felt intentionally cheesy in a fun way. And I think it boils down to this. My my takeaway was, it's almost like if you're gonna be that cheesy, yeah, you have to commit to it one hundred percent. Yeah, and I feel like he only committed maybe eighty percent. Yeah. It's the reason why we love Tom Hanks as David S. Pumpkins. You're right. <laughs> because he is just, he is throwing everything yeah. into that. And Jim Carrey's getting older, you know, so... Uh... And maybe he doesn't have the energy, or, or just, it felt like at times he, if you're going to do that role and do it goofy, you've got to be completely devoted to it uh, and, and i don't think that he was i didn't love the performance i thought I, casting wise i thought he was a great choice and at first i thought that was odd but it made sense to me um that it, when i really started thinking about it it made sense and I, I i did not think he was miscast but i guess i was looking for more laughs from this like and i, I think maybe what it was there's several factors i'm looking at here I'm comparing it to Detective Pikachu. I felt that that movie was more written to my generation. Whereas, As opposed to young kids. I think that this one was made for young kids. So maybe I'm just... Maybe I wasn't the direct audience for this. Maybe that's what I'm feeling, which is possible. Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of kids like this that. movie. You know, you know it's, the, it's done the, well. The theater I was in, there were a bunch of kids in there, and they were just having a blast. They are having a blast, yeah. So, they, they, were, they were repeating lines and, let, you know... So I get that. My my theater it was cute the first time, kind of annoying the second time. <laughs> my you know my theater is. um my theater had some kids too, but it wasn't as crowded, so it, there were kind of more silent parts for me. Oh yeah, so no, we we had a, well we went on a Saturday afternoon. It yeah, was we went, packed with kids and families. We and, we went yesterday afternoon on a Friday. You know, we, I had off. I think more families go uh, Saturdays. I get right. But, 
No, it, it was... But you felt that, right? Like, it felt like more of a family film. Yeah. Like a kids film. Which, I mean... I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with that. No, If no. that's what you want to go for. There, there's... Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it owns that. Like, you know... And I think what I was hoping for with... At least, because I, I did think the trailer was great. Like, I really loved the trailer. Even... The, both trailers, I thought, were, were good. And I kind of... Here's the thing that... I don't think the movie understood the dynamic between Sonic and Robotnik. No. Um, and because, really, the movie's called Sonic the Hedgehog, but it was really more James Marsden, and, you know, because, like, the, the conflict seemed more between him and Robotnik. And what, the, what we're... the thing about Robotnik and Sonic, the, the, the thing that makes them work is that Sonic is the Roadrunner and Robotnik is the Coyote. They're the perfect foils. Yeah, they're th- that they're they're like Batman and Joker. Yeah, like they're this iconic rivalry that. Um, and maybe we'll get more of that later. Now maybe that by the end he's like full <laughs> he's robotnik, full. which was great. That, that's that's just and, a great. And maybe bit. with that added dynamic, Jim Carrey will commit to it even further. I hope so. But I mean, with this, like, we did not see much of that conflict. And what makes Sonic and Robotnik work in every incarnation I've seen is Sonic humiliates Robotnik. That's that is their chemistry. They didn't get much time together. No, I mean, I think except in the end. And I think if your your main character, see, the main character didn't feel like it was Sonic. It felt like it was James Marsden. James Marsden humiliated him more by punching him in the face. Right. Yeah. Which was which funny, you know. Um, but James Marsden isn't supposed to be Robotnik's arch nemesis. Yeah, that's. I think that's why it felt it felt off to me. Yeah, I, I I can see why if if you're going in purely as a Sonic fan, I mm-hmm. I don't. You'll probably just think it's okay. But for kids, yeah, I think, seemed, I think and and a lot of the humor again came from stuff that had nothing to do with Sonic, like James Marsden's sister in law that hated him. Right. She got a lot of funny lines, but. That's what I mean is that a lot of the humor, I think, was just... Eh. Well, it just seemed like kind of here's, here's an average comedy. It felt like half the jokes were written by someone who was really trying to be smart and witty, especially that Olive Garden bit at the very end. And the other half was written by a studio-approved committee that said, the chart says that this joke works for this. Yeah. Yeah. It could have had more heart. And I was, I was kind of hoping for that, especially with Jim Carrey. And I, I really, I really wanted to like this more than I did. And I didn't, I, I didn't dislike it. I liked it, but I wanted to love it. And you know, and I'm, I'm a huge Sonic fan. Sonic has a mixed reputation in the video game realm. He's had some great video games. He's had some bad video games. So he's always kind of, he's always kind of been the underdog in some yeah, ways. I mean, to Mario. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say the greatest Sonic game ever made is the one sitting right here. Sonic Adventure Sonic 2. Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. Name a, name a better story than that. Better story. and See, that would have been... That would have been an amazing yeah. movie. Where's our Shadow the Hedgehog in this world? I guess maybe that's my biggest... It, maybe, and it was the same issue with... Now, this is a, a much better movie than the Mario movie, but... I think in the same way that that didn't really feel like Mario, it, it, this didn't feel like... It felt more like, a ge- like here's a generic, okay, decent yeah. kids adventure comedy, unless they're yeah. Sonic. Like, that plot could have worked with anybody. Yeah. Although, I think having Robotnik be the villain, I thought was great. I think. And, and you know, now that I, I think back, like, there's... He, he did embody Robotnik. And so I, I just think if you if you had had him and him facing off with Sonic and just I, I was I was waiting for Sonic to just keep like outsmarting him because that's that's what would happen in every incarnation, every cartoon, every comic. I mean, I, I know the stories I and mean, he he always had nicknames for Robotnik, like Robotnik, you know, and um yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I really would like to have seen... Maybe in the next one, he'll be so enraged from being I mean, and maybe, in that world. maybe they felt like they had to make a kind of more generic one this first time just to get the audience. Yeah. 
No, I hope it does well. I hope it does because it deserves to do well. Um, Especially after all the back, you know, everyone who complained, you better go see it now that they fix it. No, you know they're going to go watch it online because they have no standards for themselves. Films are meant to be seen in the theater. Yeah. Nothing beats that experience. IMAX, well, if, if you, you can. If you can get something for free, people are going to do it because that's how people are. Actually, I'm lying. Not every movie's worth seeing in IMAX. Fair enough. There, there's like a, like a playfulness to him when when he messes with Robotnik. Yeah. And it's almost like this one. He was vulnerable a lot. Yeah. He wasn't really. Like, he was away from his home, he was scared, he was injured, you know, his shoes were all messed up. You know, it wasn't the Sonic we knew, but uh, that being said, by the end, was that the Sonic we know? Could this have merely been, well, this is how we get to that Sonic? Well, it was the Sonic, I know, because he was in 16 bits and running in loops over the credits... So, That's yes. Not exactly what I meant. I know. I know. And is this the Sonic we know um, in the sense of why couldn't they get Jaleel White back? Because <laughs> that, to see, me, that, was a very, that is Sonic. That was a very different Sonic. Uh, my favorite Sonic storyline... Not, nothing against Ben Schwartz. He's great. Loved him in uh, Parks, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, yeah. But just to me, Jaleel White is Sonic. I, I thought the best Sonic stories was the Saturday AM Sonic, um, which which was, was that the weird dystopian, dystopian robot one. Yeah, but that that was pretty closely tied to the comics. The comics pretty much expanded that. But and it, then the other it, cartoon was based. That was on a the goofy games. one. That was a really goofy one. Where we're v- very different portrayals of Robotnik, but. Um, I like the kind of more serious take where essentially it's Robotnik has kind of already taken over the world and Sonic and the other animals are freedom fighters and they're trying to take them down. It's kind of, it's almost like Star Wars. It's like Yeah, and he had that machine where he could take an animal and turn yeah. them into a robot. The, the roboticizer. And I guess with this, like, I was, I was kind of hoping they have like little remnants of an environmental message, but, but Sonic, every incarnation of Sonic has been some type of environmental message. I mean, the, the original game is he's breaking robots and freeing animals. The, the whole game is freeing animals. Yeah. All right. So it would have been nice, but I, I would say that... Save it for the sequel. I mean, I hope we get that. I mean, can we, and I, can we spoil the other... So, yeah, the ending, we see Tails. He's here. He's here. You know, uh, the, just the fact that they've included him reveals that they might, you know... We might see Knuckles. Well, and again, in the beginning, I mean, those were clearly the same species as Knuckles. Can we see Shadow? He was my favorite. I don't know. I know you think he's like emo Sonic, <laughs> and that that's no, the only reason I like he's him. He's a great character. But he is you don't a, like emo people. He's... Shadow is disturbed. Remember all the songs in Sonic Adventure 2, and his is like that... His song is, is, it sounds like one you would hear in Hot Topic. <laughs> also, can we every, hear the Eggman song? Every, oh, the Eggman song. That is a great song. Yeah. I, I almost, I, I think what you said is right. I, I wanted Jim Carrey to go even further. Where I, and I felt, because that, that scene of him at the end was in the first trailer. I don't know if you recall. Yeah, it was. There was a quick, quick shot of that. And I, I thought what was going to happen in the movie was, was gonna there was there that. was going to be like an explosion or something, and that was going to just be him, like his madness at the end, just going after Sonic. And like they kind of did that, but I don't know, just it just wasn't enough. At the same time, I mean, I think I felt like I was always kind of waiting for Robotnik to show back up because I wanted to see what he was going to do. Like I thought he was probably. Maybe even more entertaining than Sonic was. It kind of goes back even to, like, Austin Powers. You remember when we watch Austin Powers, but you're always kind of waiting for Dr. Evil to yeah, pop up? Yeah, where the villain kind of yeah steals the... And he did. Though he does get the and credit instead of the top billing. Yeah. Which is interesting. But again, Jim Carrey is... See, I feel like this would have been perfect for him in the 90s. Yeah. Had they made it in the 90s. No, but he was... 
he he had to just be more over the top, I think. And or actually, if he made it in the '90s, the best farce to play Robotnik would have been Chris Farley. <laughs> Name a better yeah. Robotnik. Yeah, that would have been cool. Who else can just commit to going commit over to the, the top, over, physically over the top? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So Sonic movie, okay, enjoyed it. It I was had, it was good. I, I had fun. I, I didn't. You're you're right. I I didn't. I didn't dislike it. I, yeah. It's not like it's okay. I I was a little disappointed in that I was hoping to laugh more. It, it, it the way it was edited seemed it was like good. Uh, not... the, the way the trailer was edited seemed like it was going to be more of a comedy. See, you've got to stop going into these movies with such high expectations. I know, but it's Sonic. You, you've got to grow up with Sonic. You've got to have your soul destroyed like me, <laughs> and just go in expecting yeah. mediocre. And then when it's actually kind of decent, you're like, huh, that was because I saw that trailer even. I didn't even care about the CGI. I yeah. just thought that's that that's it. This seems. I saw this movie. It's called Hop. <laughs> I never saw Hop. So I... don't. Yeah. Don't watch Hop. There's a reason. There's only one Easter Bunny movie. Yeah. See, I I thought that I thought that Robotnik was going to escape into Sonic's world and chase him there and be part of the and that was going to kind of like be the beginning of the game and. Uh, another th- now that we're on that subject of where he wound up are they trying to tie in Mario because they that they is, said mushroom like 35 times that is a zone in Sonic and Knuckles oh is it mushroom hill zone I did not know that yeah so when I saw the trailer and I saw it I'm like oh mushroom hill zone so there's... I, I thought that was like because uh, isn't Sonic like they make Sonic for Nintendo now yeah, yeah. So I thought maybe, oh, are they going to bring in... Except I think, doesn't Nintendo... The, the, the Smash Brothers Initiative. Yes! Uh, <laughs> except you wouldn't see that because Detective Pikachu was done by Warner Brothers, which leads me... Does Warner Brothers hold the Nintendo movie rights and I guess Paramount holds the Sega movie rights? Probably. Because Sonic, to... Sonic is still third party, but he gets mm-hmm. published on Nintendo and also Xbox and... Yeah. So. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't see. The last time Warner Brothers and Paramount tried to work out a deal together was when Warner Brothers said, "Hey, Paramount, can you have Henry Cavill shave his mustache and just put a prosthetic <laughs> facial hair on him?" Yeah. And, how, and, how well that ended. And Paramount said, "No. Can't you just like digitally erase it?" Yeah. Shame. Mustache Gate, twenty seventeen. Yeah, so I'd like to see another one. Um, like I, I, again, like you know, Detective Pikachu. I went in with caution, but I love that movie. I thought that was, and, and again, mate, could it be your expectation was different both times? I I think the audience. I mean, would you agree that the audience for that seemed more like our age, whereas this one seemed more younger? I think that's what it was. Yeah, and you know, as I get older, I uh, starting to have nothing but contempt for anything the younger generation does. Gosh. So, you know, I. Because back in my day, things were better. And. Uh, you sound like you're 67. I, I'm kidding a little. Uh-huh. But I, I think. You're right. It, it, it's different target audiences. But I, I also think you're. I agree, Detective Pikachu probably objectively is a better movie. But I think that because you went into that with caution and loved it. Yeah. If you look at the differential, differential from what you thought of versus your expectation it was much better whereas you were expecting more out of Sonic I, I think expectation really has a lot uh, to do with it and it's also I think easier to adapt Pokemon well yeah because you can just immerse yourself into that world whereas this this is more this is this is harder to do alright all right, well so that was uh, that's all we have this week for, for Sonic the Hedgehog Sonic the Hedgehog on Philly Film Brothers Podcast Please follow us online at dorkdaily.com, facebook.com slash dorkdaily, and we will see you next time. Oh, oh, I want to mention. I want to mention, I got a free poster going to the movie. He got a free poster. And there's activities on the back for me to do while I wait. And in case you're not clever enough to complete them, the answers are down here. You just flip it upside down. You got the answers. They're, they're right there. Yes. So. I did not get a poster because apparently Regal was not giving out posters. Well, 
I look. I don't care right. how a movie is. If I get something for free, that's pretty. Cool. That makes my day. I got a poster for Knives Out. That was cool. You see, I'm, I'm bummed I didn't get that. But and this... I got trading cards for uh, Spider Man into the Spider Verse. <gasps> that was cool. This is a cool thing, though. That that is pretty cool. Yeah, it's very blue. This will this will look nice in my office. So. All right. <laughs>